survives its first contact with the enemy. The greatest theorist on war, the Prussian general Karl von Clausewitz, often explained that strategy must be dynamic, constantly changing and rejuvenating itself. In his famous treatise on war, he wrote that some generals consider only unilateral action, whereas war consists of a continuous interaction of opposites. The West needs to take these lessons to heart in its struggle with Russia and adjust its strategy, which is currently in danger of failing. The core of the West strategy has been two-pronged, to provide Ukraine with arms, training, and money, and to impose massive sanctions on Russia. That basic idea still makes sense, but the balance needs to change. It is now clear that the economic war against Russia is not working nearly as well as people thought it would. Vladimir Putin cares less about what these sanctions do to the Russian people than he does about what they do to the Russian state. And thanks to rising energy prices, Bloomberg projects that the Russian government will make considerably more revenue from oil and gas than it did before the war, around $285 billion in 2022 compared to $236 billion in 2021. Meanwhile, Europe is facing its worst energy crisis in 50 years. The basic problem with the economic war against Russia, as I've argued before, is that it is toothless because it cannot sanction all Russian energy. The Russian economy is fundamentally an energy economy. Revenues from oil and gas alone make up almost half the government's budget. And unfortunately, the solution would not be for the West to stop buying Russian energy altogether because with less supply on the world's market, it would only drive prices even higher. Having developed a dangerous dependence on Russian energy over the last two decades, Europe cannot quickly change that without plunging into a deep and protracted recession. 